welcome back to the Exchange Place podcast, y'all. It is your host, Deborah Faith, and we are back. I'm so excited about my guest today. I promised you this season that I would be bringing you some people that are not necessarily in my reach in Jersey, but that people that I listen to and that I love. So can you guys help me welcome Jamel Jackson, the relationship mechanic to the show? Yes, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm feeling amazing, I'm grateful. I'm really I, grateful. I'm, I love that, I love that. I really I'm always, I'm always in a, in a state of gratefulness honestly. So I love to hear when people are grateful. I um, I don't know if you know this, but I love to surprise my guests with this and, and just kind of the overall of how I got exposed to you. <laughs> so again, I'm sharing with the listeners, people that I listen to, but I actually um, got exposed to you on another podcast. I was listening to Living Blessed um, Javon Evans podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, Javon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so funny because the day that I was listening to you, I was actually flying out for my birthday trip and it was like five o'clock in the morning and your story like blew me away. <laughs> I was like, wow. Mm. Um, for so many different reasons, so many layers to that. But I think ultimately really the area that you're touching and of course you're the relationship mechanic. So, you know, the audience already knows what, what you deal with. But you spoke about the value and being that valuable people attract valuable people, right? Valuable people attract people of value. Yes, let me get it right. And um, I was like, I need to have him on the podcast. (laughs) I need need you to come and drop some of these gems over here. And I just really want to, I, first of all, I want to, I want to understand where you got the relationship mechanic from. So give me, can you give me a little bit of background of where that even comes from? Well, that, that name stemmed from me. I was having a conversation with a, a gentleman who was at my store in the mall, his name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was talking about, I was asking him what he, what, what does he do for a living? He was beginning to tell me how he's a mechanic. And I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. I was like, and he just started to describe his daily process and how he works and everything. And I'm always intrigued with what people do, how they do it, what they do behind the scenes. And he said, he said, I must, I said, I actually, I said this to him. I said, man, it must be difficult being a mechanic. He said, not really. He said, I just operate on the three C's. And I was like, what's that? He was like, mm-hmm. cause, complaint, correction. He said, that's how I get paid. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm, pretty interesting. I said, so what wow. do you mean? He said, when somebody comes to me, nine times out of 10, they come with a complaint saying that my vehicle is doing ABC and that's what's wrong with it. He says, that may be the cause, but at that moment, it's just a complaint. Mm -hmm. He says, so what I do is I take the vehicle and I do a diagnostic test. And based off that diagnostic test, I'll determine if the complaint is actually the cause. He said, Mm -hmm. now if the complaint is the cause, then I still have to correct it. But if the complaint's not the cause and I do a diagnostic text and I find out the cause, I still have to correct it. He mm-hmm. said, so I get paid off the diagnostic test and correct it. So that, that's me as a mechanic. And I said, and when he said that, I said, hmm. at that top point in time, I was going by the, the you know, relationship coach, relationship, you know, and, and I'm not against anybody saying that, saying, hey, relationship coach or anything like that. But when he said that, yeah. I said, you know what? I'm the relationship mechanic. And he was like, what? I said, yeah, I'm sorry. And I said, you know what? I'm going to operate off the same model. I operate off the, excuse me, I'm like, sorry about that. Very sorry. I said, um, I'm operating off the three C's. Cause, mm. complaint, correction. Or complaint, cause, correction. So I'm the relationship mechanic. And I told him that. And I said, and I just took it and I ran with it. Um, it wasn't, I don't believe it's like a name that he came up with. Because mechanic, everybody knows. I mean, everybody mechanics, knows mechanic. But I'm mm. the relationship mechanic. So when people do come to me, I make it simple. I operate off the three C's. They come with a complaint. Hey, this is what's wrong with my relationship. Um, We have a communication problem. We have a conflict problem. We have a financial problem. Okay, that's what you're telling me the complaint is. I'm not saying it's not true, but let's do a diagnostic test. Let's do a relationship assessment. And based off that data, I can determine if that is the cause. Nine times out of 10, it's not the cause. So Mm. therefore, when I discover the cause, now we have to correct it. 
Gotcha. So when, when people come to you, because what I just heard was basically seeing the fruit of something and thinking it's something else, but you're the one that actually gets to the root cause of what's causing the fruit that they're seeing in their relationships. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, like if, if a person, when, when people reach out to you, and I'm sure you're gonna have the, tons of people who are already reaching out, but just people having relationships. I feel like relationships are top tier of people having issues. Like we have all these relationship gurus, so to speak, um, out here. But can you talk about your approach? Cause I, I feel like yours is more spiritual um, based as well as, of course, looking at the root cause, but I feel like there's a level of, a, of relationship intelligence that you're using to a different level and coupling with spiritual intelligence as well. Most of the time, if somebody comes and they say, hey, this is what the issue is, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's symptoms, there's symptoms and signs. You know, symptoms are subjective, signs are objective. Okay. So sub a subjective symptom example would be a person experiencing pain in their back. So that's subjective. I can't see that pain. You know, objective sign is a person has a rash probably on or a lump on their arm and we could that's subjective. I could see the lump on their arm. So somebody may come, a couple may come and you can clearly see, okay, they have a communication problem. Mm -hmm. You know, but most of the times the symptom that they say they have, it's either subjective or objective. Okay. And if it's subjective, then we have to do an assessment so we can really diagnose the problem right and correctly. Okay. So that's and one what, of the first things. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What What type of assessments do you do? Is that just, is that individual assessments or is that together with the couples that you normally see? I mean, we can, I can do it for an individual, but normally it's with couples. There's a company, okay. I can put it out there, I, I got certified through as a facilitator, a relationship facilitator mm -hmm. called Prepare and Enrich. And they use evidence-based facts, material used by hundreds of thousands of therapists, coaches, counselors, facilitators. Um, it has changed the lives of over 4 million couples. So this is the tool that I use in terms of, this is one of the tools outside of the homework assignments that people may get, but that relationship assessment tool is what I use. And it's for couples that are either desire to have a long-term relationship, they're preparing for marriage, or they're just preparing mm -hmm. to have a long-term committed relationship, or they, or they are in a committed relationship, or they are in a marriage, and they just wanna enhance it and make it better or improve it. Gotcha. So do you think like going into relationships, because I think so often like for singles and I know we're talking relationships, but prior to getting into a relationship with mm -hmm. somebody like say I come to you and say, hey, I met somebody that I think I may be interested in going into. Do you also coach those people through like is I this do. a good fit initially so they don't go and have I mean, I know all relationships are going to have issues. That's not, you know, or or challenges along the way. Mm -hmm. But do you also assist people from, I guess, the beginning of that to there's kind a, of lead a, them? There's a book that I, there's my, my second book that I just recently put out. It's called The Value Workbook. Mm -hmm. And it does address things like core values and dating and questions mm -hmm. to ask while dating. I do open my schedule up sometime to do one-on-ones with individuals. Um, whether it's a, a woman or a man, mm -hmm. but I specifically focus on couples, but I will open my schedule up to do that. That's a little, it's not so much my lane, but I will okay. do it because I know it's, a, it's essential. So I'm not ignoring if somebody comes and they say, hey, I really, really, really want to work with you. And I'm like, no, I only do couples. I won't do that. I'll be like, hey, let's get on, this, let's get on the call. Up. Let's do an assessment because it is essential before you go into the process. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I no, I was. That's what I'm thinking. I think a lot of people sometimes get into relationships, either not being ready for a relationship and kind of thinking you're ready for a relationship, and then by the time they are already in it, it's kind of like ah. Uh, where I think if you if you did some type of assessment prior to that or had certain conversations or even visited certain things, maybe they wouldn't be an issue or necessarily come up, you know what I mean, down the line. 
Because a lot of things too stem from even how people grow up, you know what I mean? Your origin of family, how you communicate, like you said, bad communication or people having issues, not bad communication, but people having issues with communicating. Is it a, a issue necessarily with the way you communicate or the way that you were taught to communicate? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. I know. I know no, no. I'm, I'm so, um, I guess I'm, I'm thinking more so if people do more of their work because it's a lot of self, you know, self work that we have to do ourselves. If people focus on that or know that from the start, maybe we'll handle some of those things in our relationships better as we are going along in our relationships. Does that make sense? No, it does. I believe self-discovery <laughs> is one of the most potent things that you can utilize before diving into a relationship. Mm -hmm. And is it easy? I'm not going to say that because I know sometimes people just say stuff like this and it's like, oh, just go self discover yourself and get alone and, and, and know who you are. Yeah, it's a process. And, and sometimes it can be strenuous. Sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be challenging depending on the person. For some people, it may come easy. Like, I just know what to do. They just like, I just get alone by myself. And that may come easy for some, but not for others. But it is yeah. essential that we take that time and discover our likes and our dislikes, mm -hmm. what we want and what we need. And there's a difference mm -hmm. between want and need. I always say you're, you're, um, it's in your needs that your wants are met. You know, so it's, it's, in, it's in your needs that your wants are met. And a lot of times we don't even know what we need. We're chasing what we want or we don't even know what we like. So when we get into relationships now, there's we're, we're catering or trying to appease another person. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely do your homework with yourself. And, I'm, and I don't know how long it, it, it takes a different amount of time for everyone. But understanding yeah. your core values. I say this when I'm talking to people who may be in the dating phase of six months a year or just in this relationship I always ask them do you know your core values and your mm -hmm. core values could be something let me give an example where somebody may say okay I'm not tolerating anyone who smokes or drinks or I'm not to tolerating anybody who uses profanity or they got a hot temper or they don't love God. These are just mm -hmm. some examples. These may be someone's core values. And they're like, you know what? He, maybe they have two or three and they're like, I'm not compromising on this for anyone. Yeah. And so we go into a relationship with these core values, not saying that you're putting yourself on a pedestal like you're better than anyone, but these are just some things I'm unwilling to compromise because of who I am. I pro I'm protecting my peace. I'm protecting my inner being and I'm not sacrificing it. And so we go mm -hmm. into this relationship, meeting the person and we know our core values. But sometimes if we don't know, if we don't have them defined, we'll get into a relationship. We don't even ask these questions. We don't. I, a lot of questions I don't think we have prior to relationships. Um, mm -hmm. I think initially people... I don't want to talk about everybody, but I think a lot of people go in with kind of what relationship goals have been defined as. Like, I don't know that people have serious conversations about core value things. Like, it's just like, okay, this person is attracted. I'm attracted to them. But a lot of people go in and I'll give you an example. I had a friend of mine who never wanted children, right? She knew that kind of communicated that to her partner. They went five years into the relationship and he still was thinking she was gonna change her mind. She really didn't want children. But I don't think they ever really dug deep into that particular topic, which again, for her was one of her like, I'm not doing, I don't care how, I how much I love you. And you spent five years and I won't say it's wasted because I think both of them probably learned tremendously in that relationship. But I see that so often that it's just scary. Like, why aren't we? Why do you think we don't have those conversations? Is it just the immediate that people want more instant gratification of like, oh, I'm in a relationship. This is hold on the whole relationship goal thing that we don't have those conversations or like what? What do you think that is? Why people aren't having those those conversations up front sometimes i believe people don't have those conversations because in fear of losing something that's in front of them mm. maybe they're captivated captivated by the beauty by the mind whatever that mm -hmm. thing may be that is captivating them or even if we don't use the word captivating the word 
that that thing that is attracting them from that person. There's a chapter yeah. in my book called Lease Agreement. And okay. I came up with this analogy from this scenario that I faced in, in my life one time. I was looking for a townhome at that time to rent. This was years mm-hmm. ago. And I went into this townhome and it was nice. And it was one of the properties where the realtor leaves the lockbox on the door so you can just punch a code in and get in. You so I, get in. I, I obtained the code from an email that I sent to the realtor and got in. I was like, wow, it's nice. It got the, it had the vaulted ceilings, it had the hardwood floors, the granite countertops, the stainless steel appliances, the double mm-hmm. vanity sinks. It was like, wow. So I, I um, got on the phone and I called the number that was listed Rung the, uh, rang the guy up, he answered the phone, asked him all the prerequisites. He said, yeah, just uh, send me the money over and then I'll send you the uh, lease and you can look over the lease and if you don't like it, then I'll send you your money back. And I said, hold on a second, excuse me, what'd you say? He said, yeah, send me the money over, I'll send you the lease and if you like it, then mm-hmm. you can sign the lease and then if you don't, I'll send you your money back. Mm-hmm. I said, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, why would I send you my money before I get the lease? So I said, mm-hmm. Then I, then I didn't even say, I said no, but then I said, I'll give you a call back. Because I wanted to call somebody and say, listen to what this guy just told me. Yeah, I was like, so I called one of my that. friends, told him what the guy just told me. He's like, man, that's bogus. I said, oh, yeah, I know. So I left the place, put the lock back, lock on, box back on. And in my head, I'm thinking, this has got to be a scam or something. So I started Googling things and come to find out it was a scam. Now, the property was real. You know, the okay. lockbox and everything was official, but somebody... Uh, when I read up on it, people were getting access to, access to these codes somehow oh. through the internet and being able to give it to somebody and, and then pose as the realtor of the property. And people were actually moving into these type of properties. And then later on, the, the real person showing up saying, hey, you, you can't even be here. Wow. So when this, is, when this scenario happened, I thought to myself, while I was driving home, how often do we do this in relationships? Hmm. Where we, 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 we look at the property or we look at the person and they're telling us everything up front, but we sign the lease anyway. I'm we make this lease, we make this lease agreement. And that's what I, I imagine if I would have signed, if I would have gave that man the money and signed the lease. And the thing is, I was thinking about doing it too, because I was mm. like, oh, it has, it has everything that I want. It looks so nice. Like, let me just sign it. This man would have got my money and I would have been out of the money and a property. But here, wow. in, 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 in relation to relationships, this is what we do. We sit down with this person. They explain their core values. Now you have an option to sign the lease or you have an option to be in agreement with this person. They told you they did not want any children. They told you that I didn't want anybody who didn't love God. I told you that or you have to you have to be a man of loyalty and honor and respect and you can't use profanity. They told you this, mm-hmm. but we'll ignore it. And we'll, con- here's the thing, we'll ignore it because one, we're, we're, we're fascinated by the granite countertops. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, he's so handsome. The stainless steel appliances. Ah, I know, it, here's the thing, there's some things you might be willing to compromise on. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me say this. Let's just say this to go deeper into the chapter mm-hmm. because I went into the chapter doing this. If the property doesn't have what I desire, why am I going to sign the lease? Uh. If you go to the place and you say, you know what? It, 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 here's one thing I'm not compromising on. It has to have granite countertops. It might not have hardwood floors, but it has to have granite countertops. You go there on a Thursday. It doesn't have granite countertops. Mm-hmm. I say to you, Hey, let's go back and look at that property. You're like, no, Jamel, I'm okay. It doesn't have granite countertops. It doesn't have what I want. Yeah. Then Saturday came and I said, come on, let's go back and look at it. Why are we going to look at the property? It's not a bad property. It just doesn't have the granite countertop. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like the location, but it doesn't have the granite countertops. I'm not signing the lease. Mm, It doesn't make the person a bad person. It doesn't make them horrible. It doesn't. It doesn't discredit them or belittle them in any way. It's just that I don't want any. You, you said it in, the, in your in your conversation when you're sitting down at the the, the restaurant or the walk in the park. I mm-hmm. don't want anyone who does this type of drug. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make the person a bad person because they're doing drugs. It's just that that's your core value. Yeah. But what we do is we ignore it. 
and we say, man, he's so fine or she's so remarkable, maybe they'll change. So I'll sign the yeah. agreement. Think about how crazy that sounds, though. Why would his thing? Somebody, and in the lease agreement, I said, I dare somebody, well, not dare, but people would say, well, how, how soon should I have this conversation? I'm not saying you sit down on the first date, as soon as the meal comes and the waiter leaves, hey, what's your core values? No, that's, no. that's, that's foolish. But somewhere yeah. in the midst, I say the first date, I mean, maybe the second date to go to this I'm extent. with you with the first date. <laughs> think, of, think about it though, we sit down. I say the first date because think about the property scenario. If we went and saw the property on Thursday, it did not have the crown of granite countertops. It doesn't make it a bad property or a bad person. Why am I coming back Friday to see the apartment or the a town home? There's no need for me to come back. But we you sit down what? at the table. We have the dinner. We explained our core values. The person said what they said. And then what you have to do now is doing it. You have to internalize that and make a judgment. Am I going to compromise my core value or am mm -hmm. I going to stand on it? And maybe you might not tell them right then and there, which I believe you should uh, in a casual way, or maybe you tell them, maybe you don't have the courage in front of the person and maybe yeah. you say it when you call them. Um, but don't say, oh, you know what? Let's meet up again Saturday. Why are we meeting Saturday for? Uh. We, you, there's, you don't have granite countertops. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, and I just want to answer your question because I was so, I was so convicted in your conversation, <laughs> your explanation because I've been there before. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people are either tired or waiting, or they're in a place where they're kind of like they're entertaining company more so and not looking at dating like collecting data they're looking at it like it's more of a permanent thing um i love think i want to go back though. Go think about this though i was I'm, I'm only saying this because this is not stuff that i conjured up i lived this out in that because yeah. in that moment if i would have signed that lease mm. i would have been out of i would have been his thing i don't know how long i would i would have probably been sending this person money until money. the real people showed up and said hey what are you doing i could have been out of who knows how much money every how month every money? month but i already signed the lease and the reason i would have signed it was not so much based off of it wasn't going to be based off of what the man said mm -hmm. it was going to be based off of my infatuation with the design of the home what, what so saw? beautiful though i know it's not i know the lease ain't right i know that lease sounds crooked but this granite countertop, this hardwood floor, these stainless steel appliances, man. And so what we do is think about it. We sign that lease and then time progresses. Mm -hmm. And then just like in normal leases, we like, oh, you know what? I want to bring my dog. They like, no, that's in the lease. You can't have a dog. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the relationship, now he or she wants to have children. And you like, hold on. I don't, I didn't, I didn't want any kids. Want or now, to. now they, you trying to say, hey, let's go worship. And they like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But you thought you could change. So now in that moment, I'm going to bless somebody with this. In that moment, now the disagreement and the feuding and the conflict and everything starts to happen because we're not on a mutual agreement. When in the beginning, we could have we could have we could have we could have annihilated all of this. Mm -hmm. But that's OK, because there's grace. And even if you're in that position. There's always a way to reverse engineer it because you did what you did. You said what you said and you signed the lease. Now you're in it. Yeah. And so now so we just got to go ahead. How would, how would you, for, for somebody who has gotten themselves into a situation like that and now they realize, okay, that this relationship is not the relationship that they thought it was. When you say re-engineer that, what do you mean? Is it, is it that they work through that or because it's a core value that they pretty much have to sever that relationship and start over? I wouldn't immediately. I wouldn't immediately tell someone to sever it. I would mm -hmm. do. We ha we would have to reassess the foundation. Okay. Maybe you guys can come to an agreement now. Okay, this core value that I have, I compromised it, and I am where I am. Mm -hmm. This person has a co core value. They compromise it, and they are where they are. And now we're together, and we're bumping heads because let's let's use the kid scenario since you said that, mm -hmm. or the child scenario since you said that. Well. He wants children. I don't want children. I told him that five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. I'm adamant about it. It's not that he's a bad man. I just don't desire to have children. And he's yeah. adamant about having the children. So 
if these two cannot come to a common ground, then we have to really make a definitive decision of what are we going to, what are we going to do? And here's where, here's where I'd be a little, a little blunt because mm-hmm. if this person is not willing to compromise, if, 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 if not one of the parties are willing to compromise, then we have to come to a common ground. Are we going to continue this journey? Gotcha. Because if we can continue this journey without mutual agreement, it says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Mm-hmm. It's only a matter of time before we start break going apart again. And then the famous scenario or the, no, the famous words come out is we just grew apart. No, 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 no. I said that, I thought about this this morning. Mm-hmm. I didn't know when I was going to use it, but now I know I'm, I'm going to use it right here. Because I hear the term, term sometimes where people say we just grew apart. We just grew apart. Mm-hmm. And I believe that does happen because I used to say, man, no, nah, that doesn't happen. I believe it does happen now because of this that came to my mind this morning. I believe, yes, people do grow apart because they never grew together. Mm. We, we will grow apart if we never grow together. And what do I mean by grow together? Going back to the foundation of the building of the relationship, did, were our core values even aligned? Are we going to have challenges? Yes, I believe so. But when our core values are in alignment, mm-hmm. we might not agree on everything, but those core values are essential. We yeah. might not agree on everything, but we can't disagree on the main thing. Yeah. The main thing that we're navigating, the, the, the main thing that's holding the GPS together for us to constantly look at and view as we travel down this journey in our relationship. When we agree on that, then we begin to grow together. And the more we grow together, the less we grow apart. Gotcha. Wow. But when the core values are not aligned, then, like I said, we have those conflict issues. Now, it trickles over into other areas of our relationship, finance and sex and spirituality. And so now, as time progresses, we're not in agreement. So and it's, and how can we walk together? Or we, we just keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And then when it does fall apart, instead of addressing what really was the issue, and not a, and instead of pointing it out as a symptom, remember symptom. Mm-hmm. We use the term, oh, we just grew apart. We just grew apart. And you did, you did grow apart. And that's why I said I believe that you did grow apart. But what happened was you never grew together. Mm. Mm. And in order that's... to go together, we gotta grow together, and we can flow together. Mm. And in order to that's do that, good. we gotta look at the root of it. Before we start, before you even meet him, before you meet her, what are my core values? What am I not willing to compromise? These things are deeply ingrained in principles that I stand on. What what are these what are these things that I'm not willing to compromise? Sometimes we some some of us don't know that, and it's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. It's it, but it's 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 time where you can sit back, and even if you're already in it, let me just sit back and because I never thought about that, Jamel. What are some yeah. things I'm not willing to compromise on? I didn't I didn't have it at the beginning. I was like, man, you know what? No, nah, but I had to define it and say, you know what? These things are important cornerstones in my life and I'm not compromising it for anyone. Yeah. So when you, can we go back to like the first date, which I agree. I think, I feel like you can't, everything is not a loss, right? So even if we're looking at somebody, whether you're attracted to that person or not, you go to dinner, like how do you, do, how do you suggest kind of, sliding those core values in because of course you don't want nobody wants to go on a date and be interrogated so to speak even though you know you are collecting data but how do you think you slide those in without the other person feeling again like it's so aggressive or you're coming off like oh wow I don't know if I thought that far like are we talking about children on the first date when I basically don't know you like that you know are we talking about those core things that may I won't say scare people away but make them yeah flee or kind of take that wrong so how do you think we slide that into a first date <laughs> I believe that takes some some studying or let me not use studying maybe a big word um in terms <laughs> of during that moment like I'm studying okay. the person but but I mean you are studying the person but you're a certain extent. And, yeah to a certain extent you're not like sitting there like this but you're <laughs> you're enjoying you're enjoying a meal or you're enjoying a walk walk in a park and mm-hmm. like I said th- these are in my in my value workbook I break down 30 questions to ask while dating and there's different sections like sexuality I mean sex communication finances and uh, I forget the other one off the top of my head but 
Mm-hmm. Commun- communication is probably the most important part of any relationship. This area oh, should be yeah. constantly sharpened. So Absolutely. let's just say you're sitting down, you're having a meal, you're talking about where you're from, you know, the, the, the typical questions we ask, how old are you? Do you have any kids? Um, where'd you grow up at? Where, where'd you move from? Where do you live now? And then one of the questions you can throw in there, you know, you, then you start eating your food and you're just laughing and you're talking about, you know, maybe, oh, I did the same thing when I was in high school. Wow, that's crazy. And you, maybe you can um, take a tour, a detour and say, hey, you know, in, in terms of communication, like, um, have you ever been let down in a relationship? And, and if so, can you can you explain it to me? Mm. That's just one. That's just you throwing one question out that we typically might not ask. Yeah. That's or, a good or you one. might just and, and some of these questions we might not want to ask because once again, remember, it's like the person may, you might be attracted. Like, man, I don't I don't want to say this because it might run them away. And I haven't been on a date in so long, and this person is just everything <laughs> is so right. But then yeah. once again, it goes back to that lease agreement. It, yeah, it's all right. The granite countertops are shiny. Those stainless steel appliances look beautiful. That vaulted ceiling is nice. It's, it's, it's just how I like it. But if these core value things don't line up, it was nice meeting you. You're an amazing yeah. person. But I have to continue my journey because I don't want to sign up, sign a lease, and be locked into an agreement. Hmm. My word, your word is bond. You lock yeah. yourself into an agreement. I mean, let me not say lock, but you put yourself in an agreement. So you might ask the next question, like, what's your thoughts about sex during the dating phase? Hmm. That's a good question. I, so I, I, I'm probably going to overshare on this podcast, but like that's one of probably the hardest things that I think now in dating, which I'm going back to dating, so to speak. But like sex is one of those things. I'm celibate, right? So it's one of those things that I always, I have a fear when you talk about fear, sometimes saying that to somebody in the sense of like how are you going to take that and what does that look like you know what i mean if i ever make it to an actual date we're gonna laugh about that later but like actually get to a physical date that we're actually going out because i can't get past the conversation on phones because of some core values but like sex is one of those things that i'm just like you know we live in a place right now that Sex is kind of something, and I don't want to say with everybody, but it's kind of like the normal thing. Hey, in dating, yeah, we expect to have sex. Where I'm just like, spiritually, what I think about joining together, and won't want to go too far and too deep into it. I'm just like, I don't want to do that with just anybody, right? So it's like, Mm -hmm. uh, how I viewed sex probably 10 years ago to now looks a lot different. And I often have that, like, uh, I'm probably not sliding that in on the first date. I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell somebody that on the first date, they're going to listen to this podcast and probably know, but <laughs> I'm not normally, that's not something that I'm leading with, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, and I understand like not just coming out the gate with certain questions, Yeah, that's um, a but I believe, point. I believe also, I believe also we have to be mature dating with purpose and being yeah. intentional about our life and our relationships especially when it comes to an intimate partner because it's time i'm not saying you live recklessly but making yeah. prudent moves while you're in that position of seeing this person why not when especially we're, if, if we're mature adults mm-hmm. even i mean if you're a teen because they're teenagers but we're not talking about teenagers right now but if you're mature yeah. adults we should be able to handle these type of conversations. And even though it's not easy, let, yeah. me, let me take that back. We should be able, because it's we sh- some of us, we never had these conversations. No. So for the first time, it could be difficult. This is why I actually put the workbook out there. So you mm-hmm. could actually look at it and, 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 and review some of them. It's not all of the questions. I don't have all the questions, but some of them you could just be like, let me practice this, saying this with myself. Like, um, how important is sex to you? Saying yeah. that to the person that you're, I don't believe the, the first day, I don't think that's a bad day to ask a question. Like, it just depends on how you ask. It depends on how you ask it, the tone and when you ask it. Yeah. Maybe you find, you find that maybe you, maybe you have three or four questions that you like. These are some three or four questions that I'm going to ask tonight when I go see tonight. when I'm on a date with this man, not no just general questions like, Hey, yeah. where'd you grow up at? No, I got some four intentional ones in my belt that I need to ask. <laughs> Yeah. No, real. Here's, here's the thing. No, so I'm, waste, I'm. So, so you don't waste your time or his time, or he doesn't waste your time, or you don't waste his. 
Yeah. Because you might say, you might just you might just say it during the conversation, like, um, so how? What are your sexual expectations, or or how important is sex to you? As a matter of fact, let's just get off the sex one, because I know we go down the sex one. People just get real crazy. Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I I think it's I think it's one because, and I I don't know where your, your dating status, but I feel like in the dating world, it's kind of a let like it's a very it's a question yeah. that men are leading with, like you know what I'm saying. So it is one of those that can be uncomfortable because it's like oh well are you are you not disclosing that right off the bat should you disclose that and is it a way like you said to have that conversation um and kind of say hey how do you feel about that because i'm not saying never i'm just saying hey let's figure out if we're gonna do really have an intentional relationship and it's not just gonna be a hookup you know what i mean like yeah, oh yeah we like thing. each other and the thing with that is that it's not some people would take this as man it's just the first date mm-hmm. you, you are think about it goes i can't stress this lease agreement so much like mm-hmm. let's just say this person is property i'm not saying the person is property it's an analogy for those that are listening or watching let's just say this person is property if it doesn't line up if it doesn't have what you desire then you can make a de- you can make a determinal mm-hmm. uh, you can make a definitive decision Am I going to meet this person next week if they ask me, hey, we should go on another date next Friday? Based gotcha. off that, you you might think, and you, you're doing an internal, you're internally thinking about what you asked. I asked this question about, hey, um, do you believe people should have sex before marriage? Let's just say that's one of the questions you asked. That's a good and the one. Person, and the person asked, the, they answered the question, and it wasn't in alignment with you. Does it, now, I'm not saying you disqualify them, but that's something internally that you have to take back when you leave that person and decide, am I going to go on another date with this person? All the, from the answer they gave me, am I going to do it? Maybe you yeah. will do it and give them another chance. And then act. that's up to the person. But, but his thing, don't discard the information and say, don't mm-hmm. discard the information if you know that the information is something that you don't desire to proceed with. Gotcha. Gotcha. Don't take it and say, oh, you know what? I know he or she said that because we end up in this scenario of I'll just get him to change. Just just let me get him. Uh, yeah. And now yep. I'm, a, I'm now I'm three months in, six months in or a year in and they're not trying to change. Not but they told but you can't hold them accountable because they told you who they were and where they, they were. told you who they were and yeah. what they stood for. And once again, it doesn't make them a bad person. They were no. just expressing to you as another mature adult. Yeah, this is what I believe, or here's what I don't believe. What do you want to do? Yeah. So can you, because I, I, A, I need to get your workbook, because <laughs> I'm guilty I don't have it. Can you share with us, um, I know you have a book you already released, and I think you have something coming up, as well as that workbook, or is the workbook part of the first book? I know you have a value. What, have is, one, what is your first, first book? first book is The Value of Relationships, and that's okay. principles to build in a solid foundation, and it's addressing all relationships. And as I tell people, first the relationship, I personally believe, between us and God and then everybody else after. Mm -hmm. And it's friendships, family, business, significant other, but all relationships. Okay. And then that the workbook is part of that or that is is that something separate? No, the workbook is is separate. Okay. But I'm thinking about putting a package thing together where people buy the first book, they just get the workbook with it. Okay, I, I want I want that one <laughs> where I get where book. I can get both, and I yep I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that tonight and once we get off. <laughs> I want to I want to I want to say this to somebody that's listening or watching. Mm-hmm. Everything that I'm saying goes for me as well. So mm-hmm. as much as I'm a, as much as I'm teaching as as much as I'm teaching is just as much as I'm a student. So when I'm talking, I'm listening to what I'm saying because I need to apply it as well. You know, I'm not on the dating scene anymore, but there's still things that are applicable to my life that I still have a relationship assessment that I periodically review with my partner and not I just take that. it one time and then toss it to the toss it in the closet and say, oh, we did it and we got our results and great. No, this is something you have to continually look at and do an architectural review of the foundation. Like, OK, oh, you know what, man? I'm, and as a man, I'm just saying for me as the man, man, mm-hmm. I, I see I might be slipping in this area after I'm looking at the data. I'm not okay. Let me make a tweak. I love that. I love that. You know? Yeah. I don't. I don't know that people do that. I think it's almost like, and not just with romantic love. I think sometimes we take our relationships for granted. 
so to speak, even as a parent, sometimes like doing check-ins, like even with my kids, I I created this space that we do check-ins. Like, how are you? What's going on? Because sometimes you get so busy and caught up in the normal everyday stuff. I don't think we do check-ins as much as we probably should. And definitely, I know I'm guilty in, in any relationship I've been in in the past. I don't, I'm not checking into that level. Like, hey, how we started or where we, when we were in this this place, am I kind of going back and being like, hey, am I still doing what I was supposed to be doing or what made you happy or what had our relationship at that point? I don't think we do check-ins like that. So I love that. I love that you do that yeah, it's, in your relationship. It requires a level of vulnerability and hopefully mm-hmm. you have a partner where it is a safe landing place where you can come in with that type of conversation and yeah. communicate that way because I've, I've trained my mind and I periodically check in with my fiance and I'm like it may not be every day but maybe once a week or maybe twice a week where I'm like hey um how am I doing how am I in this communication mm-hmm. area how am I how am I here like is there something I could have did better here and not that I'm doing doing bad but it's just that if I want to know like and maybe you might she might say something like hey you know maybe you could do this you know so far I've been getting straight A's so I'm like yes you know what I mean? <laughs> And then yeah. I asked, and then um, she asked me the same question, like, "Hey, what do you think? Is there anything I need to improve on?" And if there's something there, we offer suggestions, just I so, just that. so we not, so I'm not taking it for granted, you know. And I, yeah. and I, I intentionally train myself to periodically check in, and if it's not once a week, it's definitely not going past a whole month where I'm not checking in and checking me because I, I may miss it. I'm, 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 I'm human. I may miss it and be like, I may. I may not have said nothing derogatory, but it just may be something I did and didn't even wasn't aware of it. And you're like, hey, yeah. Janelle, you know, you handled me like this the other day. I didn't like that. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even know it wasn't intentional. I'm so sorry. Um, how can I tweak that? Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's how healthy healthy relationships happen, though. And I, I, I love everything that you shared today um, with the with the audience and with me. You have blessed me. <laughs> So oh, yeah. I am awesome. definitely seriously, seriously, because I'm like, I can't wait to look at your, your your workbook, which I'm getting after we get off of here. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. Um, if anybody wants to follow you or get your um, your book, how do they get in contact with you? Um, they can go to jamaldjackson.com and jamaldjackson.com. That's also my social media, Facebook, mm-hmm. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter is Jamel D. Jackson at all those social media. And then the, the website just has a dot com on the end, Jamel D. Okay. Dot com. And they could also check out the Value TV show. It's on YouTube now until we yeah. get a network. We will get a network. You and, will. Oh, yeah. Most of yeah. Them, they, they, they oh, no, it's coming. I love what you're doing. I really do. I, it's been an honor even having you on the show. And I'm so glad that you actually said yes. So, yeah. Oh, until... no. Thank you for having me, man. And yeah. then here's the thing. If there's a couple out there, uh, get the assessment. I'm telling you. Here's the thing. I'm, and even if you don't get the assessment from me, take the yeah. assessment. If you don't get it from me, take the assessment. I mean, there's some other awesome therapists and coaches and counselors and facilitators out there yeah. i'll recommend you go with me um click the link <laughs> in my bio and then set up a call we'll do a consultation and see if you're even a fit because just because somebody has something out there doesn't mean i'm necessarily going to um take it along or take yeah. them aboard you know gotcha gotcha yeah. well when i get into a relationship who am i coming to i'm coming to you <laughs> you you have the a relationship customer definitely mechanic. on this side yes the relationship mechanic is where i'm coming Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And until next time, we'll see you next time. Yeah.